Uh, so yeah, I'm Sophie. Um, I'm the COO uh, and co-founder of Disposal, who, along with our sister social enterprise, Your Disposal, is on a mission to uh, empower people to know what happens to their waste and to make better decisions around it by bringing transparency and accountability to the waste supply chain. So waste is something that every single one of us creates, but actually very few of us understand. And for most people, um, when they think about waste or recycling or rubbish, um, they imagine its journey to be a sort of fairly simple one, uh, something that might look a bit like this. Uh, the fact is, <laughs> it looks probably a lot more like this. Uh, and so much of the stuff that we produce and consume uh, has a longer life after it's discarded than while it's in use. Uh, and yet, you know, we have almost no visibility of its journey once it's thrown away, once it's put in a bin. And the current system leaves most of us uh, detached from the fate of our waste uh, once we've put it in the bin and kind of disconnected from what actually happens to it. But, you know, the, the Attenborough effect has led to a massive public backlash against plastics in particular, and, you know, the uncomfortable truth that our waste often ends up where it shouldn't. Whether that's, you know, um, recycling, dumped in the Malaysian jungle, or, you know, incredible mountains of fly tipping, or human body parts stockpiled in unrefrigerated warehouses. Uh, yeah, gross. Um, so the truth is, you know, actually, it probably looks more like this, as in there's probably a lot more kind of criminal activity than, uh, than I've uh, shown. And, you know, the fact that these complex waste supply chains span the globe and what I find still remarkable and what most people I speak to find remarkable is that these are still primarily paper-based. <clears throat> so DEFRA's review into serious and organised crime in the industry found that the lack of digital record keeping is frequently exploited by organised criminals as it provides ample opportunity uh, to hide evidence of the systematic mishandling of waste. And, you know, waste crime is big business. Um, a European Commission report published in March found that the UK's estimated income from illegal waste markets is around 2.6 billion euros. Um, and staggeringly, 64% of the UK's uh, hazardous waste disappears from the legitimate waste industry and makes us the worst in Europe on, on that front. The report also found um, that actually, rather interestingly, that white collar staff in legitimate companies seeking cheaper prices are one of the key drivers of waste crime. And I mean, sadly, the current system kind of allows and actually in many ways almost even encourages that and encourages legitimate operators to, to make economically profitable decisions at the expense of the environment. And, you know, that's how you end up with recycling from our local authorities found dumped in the Malaysian jungle, or as you might have seen in the news today, uh, on Turkish roadsides. So we believe uh, that it should be much, much easier to do the right thing. And this is a concept that we've coined uh, that we call passive compliance. So by doing the right thing is the easiest thing. And we think if we do this, then we don't need to rely on people wanting to do the right thing. And we don't need to convince people to care or rely on the threat of prosecution sort of to drive behavior change and instead you know people love convenience so let's just make it easy to do the thing that we want them to do um, and you know as we've seen or as i hope you've seen that you know these are complex ecosystems with multiple actors and so this idea of passive compliance isn't something we're going to be able to achieve on our own um, so we've known that collaboration is absolutely vital and right from the kind of get go, we've been making that a key key feature of how we try and do things, because, you know, to solve these wicked problems, we really need systems thinking and we really need to get everyone in the ecosystem involved uh, in and around the table to kind of really understand what's happening. So despite being a relatively small and, and young company, um, we've worked really hard to cultivate these networks and we've sort of seized opportunities that we can kind of you know, used to this end. Uh, and we're, what we're finding now is that organisations are actually coming to us to help them to solve their data and digital dilemmas. And, you know, the waste industry is on the cusp of major digital transformation. And we believe that this is absolutely essential if we're going to really transition to a more circular economy. And resource efficiency is absolutely key. Um, at, to that you know to, to the circular economy obviously but also it's really key if we're going to kind of achieve the massive carbon budgets that we're going to need to to, to deal with the climate emergency 
Um, and this chart from the Green Alliance, I think, really highlights that. But to be able to do that, we really need to start understanding uh, like all the stuff that's handled by the waste industry. We need to start gathering the data on it so that we know what it is, how much of it there is, where it is, what's happening to it, who's doing what with it. And at the moment, frankly, as a country, we just don't have that data. And, uh, you know, really a, a bin full of nondescript rubbish is a burden. It's rubbish, right? It doesn't have any value to it. And most of our waste is treated as a burden. But once we start really understanding, you know, what is actually in the bin, then much of that waste can start to be treated like the valuable resources that they are. <clears throat> and that is a huge step towards the circular economy. And really, digital systems make it much, much easier to gather, store, analyze and share data. But, you know, we really need to go beyond simply kind of digitizing the current systems and processes which don't provide the data foundations that we need. And we need to kind of go beyond that towards getting really solid foundations in place to, to make a digital trans transformation happen that allows us to move to a circular economy. And these are the sort of three components that at disposal and your disposal we think are critical to enabling that digital transformation. So as I mentioned already, the waste industry is an ecosystem uh, and that's because of the sort of massive variety of waste producers, the fact we're all waste producers, uh, and the complexity of waste management. And these supply chains are kind of intricate and interconnected and, and tweaking one bit of the system will have an effect on other parts. We really should you know, be mindful of that and really think about that from a systems perspective and make sure that any changes we make are complementary and compatible. And that, you know, they actually they work for everyone from a sort of family run skip firm to multinational waste companies and from like a hairdresser to you know global manufacturers and, and, and everyone in between. And then the second thing that we think is critical is that we need to build this digital transformation on open principles. So open data standards make it much easier for people and organizations to publish, access, share and use better quality data. And a good standard essentially becomes invisible, but a sort of critical component to things just working. You know, like you don't have to think about um, whether the plug that you've got on an electrical appliance will work in the socket in your house. You just know those things are going to work together. And open data and standards also enable competition to thrive and allow basically anyone to know the rules of the game. And, and that really opens the door to innovation. And just to be really, really clear, Open data does not mean putting out every bit of data that anyone's ever had for everyone to see. And you only really need to look at things like open banking to see that open data can be done in a way that protects privacy and security while enabling interoperability and the linking of that data. And by promoting open principles from the start, we can avoid going down the monopolistic route that we've seen in other sectors. You know, so hello, Amazon and Facebook and Google. Um, and instead, we can kind of really benefit from an thriving ecosystem of businesses and innovation that's good for everyone. And the other thing about open data is it improves transparency and accountability. And frankly, we really need that in the fight against waste crime. Uh, and then the third thing is passive compliance, which I've touched on already. You know, let's make it easy for people to do the thing that we want them to do. So at Disposal, we have built a suite of digital tools to make compliance easier. And this map shows where users of Disposal have logged in from over the last six months. Um, so we've had users from every country that's blue, uh, and frankly, that's almost every country on the planet, which I just find completely amazing. Um, and most of this has been driven by our Waste Thesaurus, which uh, is a, a free to use tool. We've linked tens of thousands of keywords to the 842 European waste catalogue codes to make waste classification easier for everyone. And one of our customers told us that she had a big job of classifying like a whole load of weird waste when she was decommissioning a site and by using the thesaurus it took her three days instead of three weeks. Um, we've also got a directory of all licensed waste services in England and we're able to do this because the Environment Agency uh, have developed a, a, an open API of their public registers and the EA data team have said that this is exactly the sort of thing that they hoped uh, businesses might do with this data infrastructure and we're hoping to extend this to the rest of the UK um, because it's just England at the moment, but um, but it's not there yet. So we're uh, about to launch a new product of ours, which is ironically titled Paperwork, uh, which is waste management software aimed at SME waste companies. 
Uh, and earlier this year, I was lucky enough to win a Women in Innovation Award um, from Innovate UK for a project that we're working on uh, building software to help complex waste producers to better manage their waste from an environmental, contractual and compliance perspective. And we've got the support uh, from Manchester University NHS Foundation Trust to pilot the software with them. And that's amazing because they're one of the biggest trusts in the country. So the more that we build, what we're finding, though, is that we see more and more gaps in the data infrastructure that we need um, that would benefit the industry, not just us. Uh, and so where we see these gaps that open data could fill, we we try to build them. Um, so your disposal with funding and support from the Open Data Institute uh, recently released an open data standard of information around council waste and recycling centres or what we uh, used to refer to as the tip. Uh, and this sort of came about because uh, we saw an over 600 percent increase in traffic to our website, uh, to the directory pages that have that information about tips on um, during the, the first lockdown. And so we've collaborated with an incredibly broad range of stakeholders on this project. And we found that local authorities are incredibly keen to adopt um, what we're calling the Open 3R standard, as they can see how it can really help them to better communicate with the public and improve recycling rates. And already we're beginning to see innovations and use cases come off the back of it, which is incredibly exciting and, and why we think it's so important to build these data foundations. So uh, this is a site that's been created off the back of the Open 3R standard um, and, and the open data set. And basically a bunch of civic tech people just came together over a weekend, a little hackathon thing, and they built this um, over that time. And now people can go on and put information on, uh, you can go and search information about your local authority. Uh, and if you're interested, you can go and add information as well. So if this is your sort of thing, you can see that Sheffield doesn't have much, uh, doesn't have much data there. So um, if that's your sort of thing, please uh, <laughs> head to the, to the URL and, um, and add the data to it. Um, but yeah, it's just an example of the kind of thing that can happen. So yeah, that's uh, that's it from me. Thank you so much, Chris, for the invite. I'm really uh, looking forward to the other speakers and I'm excited to talk to you all afterwards in the lounge. Thank you.